questions? Just in general, anything? Okay, we're going to go over the homework. We're going to skip this one for now because we're, we're about to go over this uh, separately. Um, the homework was to set up some button presses to shoot the ball of uh, various speeds. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do this, so the way that I'm going to show you how to do it may or may not be the way you did it. Um, if you did it differently and you want to like share how you did it and you want me to like give you some advice or critique, then let me know. Otherwise, um, I'm going to show you the way that I would approach it and uh, we're going to go this kind of step by step. So this all assumes that you kind of have a ball that uh, bounces around the, the four walls. So um, let's start with that and then we'll jump into how to actually have this ball shoot at various speeds with the keys one through four. Um, so the first thing is, uh, I, I, put a pro I put an engine up in SDVA, a clean one, because we're going to need one for this class. Uh, we're going to make a ball that bounces around all four corners with velocity. And velocity is kind of the important piece here, because we are going to be controlling the velocity with keys that we press. And for the last part of the homework, it was how long you held the spacebar was also going to control it. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up my shape to be correct. So I'm going to just do some initial setup. So I'm going to set the origin to be in the middle of the circle. I'm also going to put it kind of semi um, like there, like in the top left corner, just so it's a smaller circle so I can see it colliding. OK, there's our ball. and. The next thing I'm going to do is set up this ball so that it starts moving. And we know that we can move a shape by calling move, right? You can do like this. And last, last class, we talked about how to use uh, delta time to make sure the ball moves at a consistent speed. I don't know the velocity of this ball. And it makes it really hard to control the speed of the ball when you have numbers like this. So one of the first things we need to do is set up a clock and set up something that handles time by restarting the clock every time we go through our game loop. So now that we have a delta time, we can do things like 100 pixels per second. Okay. Like so. All right. So we have this thing that's moving now. We have delta time, which is great. This right here, these two numbers represent our velocity in x and y. So what you can do is you can make two variables instead that control velocity in x and y. I'm just going to replace these guys here. Because now that we have two variables, we can change these variables and it will affect how fast the ball is moving. Which is also really important for gravity. If you want gravity in your game, you need to break out your velocity into a variable so you can adjust it over time. So all I did was make this into uh, two variables here. Okay. One other thing too is that you do this so often that you do velocity x and velocity y separately as it's a very common thing in a 2D game to have an x and a y component to something that there's already built in structures to support this. In the SF namespace there's something called a vector 2f, which is just a two variable, two float variable. Um, this basically has two floats inside of a, a variable called a vector. And all that means is that when you get the velocity here and you do dot, it has an x and a y already built in. So you can do, instead of declaring two separate variables, you can use one variable here. And the reason why this is important is because oftentimes you have a lot of operations that are very specific to vectors that deal with x and y together. And so it just makes a lot of sense to put them all in the same variable. In fact, acceleration was represented as a vector 2f. Internally, the position is also a vector 2f. So we're just going to use that here. And everywhere where I had velocity x, I could just do velocity dot x instead. Because that's what these two variables are. This is a structure here that has two variables inside of it. All right. So let's set it up now so that this ball is bouncing properly off of all four walls. And we did this last week in class, but I kind of want to just go over it again. 
I want to have this ball be bouncing off all four walls correctly. So in order to do this correctly, I'm going to set up an if statement first. I'm going to have the ball move upward, and I'll do the trivial case, which is if the shape is above the uh, top of the screen, then we can take the velocity dot y multiply it by a negative 1. And this is kind of like the um, get the position and get the y part of the position. And this is kind of the naive uh, approach because even though it will bounce, sometimes it gets stuck up there. And half of the ball gets, gets, uh, goes above the edge of the screen. So if we fix the part where it gets stuck, so the first part is we need to basically teleport it back to where it is. So I'm going to teleport it back. The x position remains the same. That's why I'm getting the current position of x. And then y is just 0. So I'm going to teleport it back to 0 so that it can properly move. So it bounces, although the shape actually goes slightly above the top of the screen, which is why you also need to consider the radius of the shape here. And now the shape will properly bounce when the top corner of the shape hits the top edge of the screen. And the shape will, will bounce off the top, but it won't bounce off the bottom because we haven't written that yet. So let's do that next. Take this whole thing. So now we're going to check to see if the shape is off the bottom edge of the screen. And the bottom edge is at 512. And it's going to be 512 minus the shape radius here. And you can do it this way too. Either way, on either side it works. Oops, I actually didn't want to subtract this over here. Let's do this instead. I just want to make it a little bit more clear. So now it bounces off the bottom edge of the screen. And we're going to do left and right now as well. So I'm just copying and pasting the whole two, two if statements. And I'm going to change it to be x. And these flip, essentially. So this goes over here. And this changes to be getPosition.y. And this changes to be x here. I'm going to copy that and paste that here. And this is instead of going to be uh, 512, it's going to be 1024. This is going to be x. And this is going to be 1024 minus get radius, and this is going to be on the x position here, and this is going to be get position dot y. Okay. So now uh, this will cause us so the ball will bounce off all four corners of the screen, which means now we can do our, um, our aiming and shooting properly. So just let it bounce off the left side here. So th these four pieces here is exactly what we're going to do for Pong. So I'm actually going to save this off right here and copy this to the network so that you guys can have it uh, because we're going to need it for a lab. So let me just do that right now. So I'm just going to put it, it's just going to be called engine.zool. I'm going to replace the one that's in here with it. Okay, so this is basically a simple ball that bounces off all four walls. Great. So now let's set it up so that when I press keys, that's when it actually starts to move. Is it this crucial that we had that in, in our homework? Because I took that part out. Which part? The bouncing part? For the, yeah, the bouncing no, part. No. I just did the cannon part. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of doing this more for review and also we need this for lab, yeah. but it also makes it a little bit easier to test our velocity. So okay. just take this as it is for now because yeah. we're going to need it for the acceleration lab. Okay. Um, okay, so let's get to the actual parts of the homework. So the homework was make a ball that starts in the lower left corner and moves up <coughs> into the right when you press space. So let's move it to the bottom uh, left corner. So that's going to be uh, 0, let's do 20, and 5, 12 minus 20. And let's set the velocity to be 0 to start, because I don't want this ball to move at all unless I hit the button. OK, there's the ball. So the simplest way is if I want this ball to move up and to the right when I hit the spacebar button, all I have to do really is set the velocity to be um, something other than 0. 
So if I go in here and I set up my event here, and this is all part of the, uh, the event handling, and then I, I figure out that I've hit the spacebar button, Here, when I hit the spacebar button, now I can set the velocity x to be equal to 200 and the velocity y to be negative 200. And this is all it takes to do, number one, is to basically when you press the keyboard for space, you set the velocity uh, to be something other than zero. So it's just sitting here, and as soon as I hit spacebar, then it shoots up and bounces around as normal. Now, what's interesting is that even though I haven't pressed anything yet, the ball is actually has, it's trying to move right now. It's trying to move, but I'm going to put a breakpoint here. The velocity here is zero. So even though it's actually still running this code all the time, the velocity is zero, so it doesn't move at all. So you don't really need to do anything other than just set the velocity to zero, and that'll stop it from moving completely. Okay. All right. Questions on this part here. Make sure this ball falls with gravity. We're going to do this uh, in lab. Now set up the keys to launch a ball with varying speeds. And I said pixels per second here. And you can use the, uh, uh, the actual pixels per second in a direction. Or you can set the x and y to be this many pixels per second. I, I actually wasn't specific on how you should do it. So I'll do it both ways. So what we want to do now is we've hit spacebar and that goes 200 by 200. Let's do 1, 2, 3, and 4 now next. And these are all pretty easy. This is basically the same idea as a spacebar. Um, I'll do num0, num1. So num1, it's going to set the velocity equal to 100. And I'll show you how to set this up so we can do uh, 100 in diagonal as opposed to 100 in x and y. And I'm just going to copy and paste this block right here three times total. Change this to be 2, change this to be 3, and change this to be 4. This is 200, I believe. 300, 600, and 1,200. 12,000. So the spacebar will still work. One will launch it at that speed. If I press two, it makes it go faster. Press three, it'll make it shoot in the upper right. And then four will make it even go even faster than that. And one will slow it down again. So between four and one, I can change the speed of the ball by going through each of the various keys. And all I'm doing is setting the velocity while it's running. So I can make it go fast, or I can make it go slow, fast, okay. semi-slow. Okay. So, so this is all it takes for the, the lab. And I know if a few of you guys did it very differently than this. Some of you guys were using variables to control whether it should fire or not. Um, and I can go over that a little bit more in detail, too. All right, we do want to change the spacebar now to fire the ball when you release it. So right now, it's set up so that when I press the spacebar, it goes. Instead, what I want to do is when I release the spacebar, it goes. So what I can do to start is I can move this case. And I'm just going to start simple and say if the event type is equal to SF event key released, I'll just do this when I release the spacebar, all right? But I wanted it, so I'm holding spacebar right now, and then let go, and the ball shoots. But the how fast it shoots right now is always the same number. So now we want to get to a point where this number here that I want to shoot the ball at, this number should be something that changes over time, which means this should be a variable. So I'm going to make a variable now that's going to be called uh, shot power. It's going to start at 0. Or let's just make this 200 to start, just to show you. I'm going to make this thing a variable, and I'm going to replace these with shot power instead. Okay, I didn't do anything except for pull these out into a variable here. I'm just going to run it. It should still fire at 200 uh, pixels per second up and to the right. So that still works. But I can now have this thing change over time. 
So the key here is that you want when, as long as the space bar is pressed, to be incrementing this power here. Okay? And what I want to do is I want to set it up so that while I'm pressing the space bar, I want to print out to the screen what this power is. So I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom. I'm going to do SF keyboard is key pressed. I'm just going to see out to the screen. Spacebar is pressed. Power is that. OK? OK. So I'm going to run this, and I'm going to show the uh, console on the left side. So this if statement here basically says, hey, as long as the keyboard is currently being held, print this out to the screen. So it's going to print out, sorry, not to the screen, to this console over here. So let's do this. OK. So I'm going to press space bar. Space bar is pressed, and it prints out that thing to the screen. And then it stops. Cool. The power is always 200, though. So instead of just printing out here, why don't I take this power and add something to it? So if I just add like 1 to it, right? And I'm going to change this here quickly because I want to make sure I count for delta time. If I just print this out to the screen, and let's start this off at 0 now. As long as I'm holding spacebar down, the power is going up. Right? And then the longer I hold it, the faster it should go. Because we've already shown that it's using that variable. Right? And we can slow it down again. And then if I press an old space bar, the power keeps picking up from where it left off. And every time I press space bar, it goes faster and faster. So there's one more thing here. There's two more things. One, I don't want to just add one here. I actually want to like increase it by some units per second. Remember, we this is why delta time is important. I, if I want this thing to go up a hundred units of a hundred pixels per second per second, that's how much faster I want to go. I can do delta time times as seconds, just like I did with the velocity, and now shot power will go up one hundred pixels per second. Or I can do 300, I don't know, 250 per second. That's how fast the shot speed is going to go up. So if I hold the space bar for 10 seconds, I know it's going to shoot out at 10 times 250, so 2,500. So you can see here, now it's actually going up at a rate that is 250 pixels per second. Or I can even change it to be something really slow, like 1 per second, right? I don't have to do something big. If I change that number to be 1 and then multiply by delta time, now the power is going up 1 every second, just like time. And it goes super slow. Fast, and then you have to go super slow. If I wanted to, I can also reset the shot power every time I press the space bar again, so that every time I press it, the charge goes up from beginning again. And all I have to do to do that is if event.key.code is equal to SF keyboard space shot power is equal to zero. When you press the space bar, which is this right here, reset the shot power. When you release it, set the velocity to be this. And then as long as you're holding it, increment the shot power here. So a system like this, oh, I forgot to mention that. If you also do, uh, if you have this thing pressed, you want to also say, Uh, you do not want to reset this if you're already currently holding it. So here, if you want to make sure that you're actually uh, reset it properly, you need another variable to, to manage this. So you need another one that says, is charging, it's false. And here you're going to set charging to true. And then up here, you're only going to reset it if you're not charging. 
and when you fire it, you're finally not charging here. So that variable here is also going to control whether you reset the shot power or not. This is an optional thing. I didn't ask you guys to do this. This is more just something for the sake of like the uh, resetting it. So now when I press spacebar again, oops, did not print that out correctly. Move this to here. Now when I press the space bar, every time I press it, it restarts back from the beginning. So this is like a power meter or like, again, like Hanzo's bow in Overwatch. Like every time you press the button, it charges up the strength of the shot. And the longer you hold it, the more powerful the shot is. Okay. All right. Cool. Questions? Yeah. Um, I didn't make my velocity for Y. I didn't make it negative. Mm -hmm. Like, is there a reason why like it still worked? Probably because it's bouncing off the bottom edge of the screen. Okay. You mean you did that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which also means you did this here. Yeah, because the ball is starting at the bottom left corner. Mm -hmm. So if you do if you do this, try moving the ball up. So I'm going to set the position here to be like 200. Try putting in the middle of the screen. And using your logic, it'll shoot downwards. Oh, okay. Bounce off the bottom. So you want to make sure that your velocity is negative if you want to aim it up into the right. Okay. All right. OK. So that is the homework. Let me stop recording that.